Hey everybody, it's Boardman21 and today's build is going to be a 100% uptime Warpath build. Warpath will still do decent damage, but we built it to where it's going to have a zero mana cost, so your mana doesn't drain at all while you use it, and you can officially stay in it the entire time that you want to use it. Now if you have auto casting skills that are insta cast like Abyssal Echoes or Ring of Shields, those will still use your mana so you might have to come out of it. However in this build we will only be running the Ring of Shields, we won't be doing Abyssal Echoes. So you basically have like 5 minutes that you can have in Warpath and when you come out of it you just use Vengeance a few times and then boom you're right back into it. Now I don't use it always as 100% uptime but I am going to be using it to pull all the mobs together so that we never have to stop, we will Warpath from the beginning of a map to the end of the map and then if I want some single target damage help I'll just use vengeance instead but warpath is hitting decently hard now I do like to stop warpath every about 10 seconds so that I can let a devouring orb off which will give me 20% increased movement speed and the reason that's really nice is because warpath itself if you don't build into speed at all can be relatively slow However, in some of this gameplay you'll see, we are actually starting to move pretty decently quick. It's not like our speed rush, shield rush build that we just did for speed running, but it does clear the entire map. You'll be dragging everything with you and it will all die as you go along, and for that, you get more loot at the end of the maps. Alright, let's go ahead and get into the skills. For skills, we're going to be running Vengeance, Warpath, Ring of Shields, Smite, and Devouring Orb. Now there's a lot of things that you can change in this build and I might upload a couple of variations if I find one that's worth doing, but they're all about equal. So instead of Smite, you can run Abyssal Echoes. Instead of Devouring Orb, you could run Abyssal Echoes. Um, you could play this as Paladin and have Holy Aura going. You don't have to have the Ring of Shields. So there's a lot of skills that you can intermix with this and still do relatively good. Instead of Vengeance, you could do Rive for your single target at the end of a map. But for us, I like the damage reduction of Vengeance if I do come out of Warpath. Um, on our items, we're not going to be running armor and protections while channeling, but you could easily go for that if you want to stay in Warpath all the time. But since we kind of come out of it, especially against the bosses, and do Vengeance for single target, I like to just go with like Mana Regen or something else, um, especially if it's more set elemental or, or armor on the but for skills, here's a Vengeance. We have 1 point in Executioner, 6 points in Boister, 1 point in Double Repostle, 8 points in Rapid Strikes, and 4 points in Dark Duelist. For Warpath, we have 1 point in Iron Reach, 3 points in Rolling Blades, and 3 points in Unchained for that negative 6 mana cost. We have 4 points in Draining Assault, 1 point in Rayhaw's Grass, and 3 points in Endless Vortex to pull all of those enemies, and 4 points in Unchained, and 1 point in Reckless Spin for a bunch more negative mana cost. For Ring of Shields, we have this set up to give us increased block chance. We have 2 points in Reinforcement, 2 points in Healing Shields, 5 points in Phalanx, 2 points in Tempered Steel, 5 points in Defensive Shields, 2 points in Banding, 2 points in Enduring Defense. For Smite, all we wanted this for was the attack speed that you can get with it. We have 1 point in Holy Wave, 5 points in Righteous Flurry, which does increase the damage Warpath does, 5 points in Righteous Flurry, 5 points in Blinding Flash, 1 point in Order of Lagoon, 1 point in Unbalanced Scale, and 2 points in Wandering Bolts. And then for Devouring Orb, we went for Defense, and we went for Move Speed with this. We have 6 points in Avoid Adept, 6 points in Abyssal Juggernaut, 1 point in Dark Moon, 2 points in Abyssal Rush, 1 point in Cosmic Impact, and 4 points in Sightless Star. For passives, we have 30 plus points in the Sentinel base class with 5 points in Overwhelm, 5 points in Counterattack, 4 points in Banish, 1 point in Fearless, 5 points in Gladiator, 5 points in Time and Faith, 4 points in Axe Thrower, 5 points in Blade Master. The 4 points in Axe Thrower is so that you can proc Smite with your uh, throwing attack that happens on the Lee hit. And we went with Retaliation build since Warpath is doing hits and you're pulling them in close to you. You might as well have Retaliation so when they hit you, you can hit all of them in the small area that they'll be in. Another thing that you can do if you don't want to run Smite or Devouring Orb, I would recommend running Abyssal Echoes as cheap as you can. You know, just a single cast, not all recast. And I'll probably do a build video on this because I really liked it. 
but you do as much area for the pull. And so as you warpath, if you have a couple that are straggling just out of its range, you can just hit it once and it'll suck them right into you. One point in Paladin, and that one point is in Honor. 15 points in Void Knight, with 9 points in Devouring Blade, 5 points in World Eater, and 1 point in Patient Doom. And 63 points in the Forge Guard, with 7 points in Battle Hardened, 8 points in Steel Ages, 10 points in Rallying Block, 1 point in Duelist, 10 points in Lethal Strikes, 10 points in Retaliation, 8 points in Regenerator, 5 points in Flawless Defender, and 4 points in Shield Crafter. And then for items, we have three different types of idols. We have increased warpath area, minion damage reflect, which is nice for the ring of shields. We have chance to cast smite. We have increased physical damage over time. And for our one by two, we have chance to ignite on hit with more elemental protection. We are running two uniques. We'll have undisputed and we will have Orion's eye. For the chest pieces, we'll again have the same armor as almost all of our other sentinel builds. And that's going to be the necrotic and poison damage taken as physical since we're running the one-handed weapon allows us to use the shield for set glancing blow increase block chance reduce damage while blocking and elemental our additional three jewelry slots will have plus strength plus hit damage plus physical damage basically a bunch of damage boost on top of that we'll be running elemental protections on the bottom and critical strike avoidance the belt just has a bunch of protect protections. The boots have a bunch of protections along with movement speed and the gloves, more protections. And that's it. I'm going to go ahead and give you guys some gameplay.